Hello, hello. This video is going to be a review of the Apologia Young Explorers series, their science books, and also some tips and tricks that I have found um, in order to use them successfully. I think, first of all, that they are a great product, but there is a lot to them, and so I have a couple ideas of how to navigate them successfully that will hopefully make them more enjoyable to use. So these books, if you go to the Apologia website, um, they say that they are for children in grades one through six, but that is the first thing I wanna talk about because while I really, really like these books, in my humble opinion, maybe not so humble, um, is that they are not at all appropriate for any child under grade Four. Even four, I think, is too young for these. So I really like them, but they have a lot of information. And so the first year that we used them, my daughter was in grade six. And I think it was a perfect amount of information for a child in sixth grade. And we're planning on using them for grades, you know, six, seven, and eight-ish, I would say. Um, and I think they're really uh, will be more appreciated by children in those grades. I think there are a lot of other things that you can do. I have some other videos on them uh, for kids and science in the earlier grades, and I would not recommend these for those due to the amount of information. But let's go ahead and take a peek. So uh, they have lots of different titles in the series. Like I said, it's the Young Explorer series. So they have things like, um, anatomy, astronomy, botany, um, and this one is on flying creatures. So it covers birds, bats, and insects. And I just, I think they're lovely books. They have a nice crisp, Christian perspective. They're written in a way that flow really nicely. And they also have lovely pictures um, mixed in, which I think is nice. And so, and you know, just a nice, amount of information for kids, like I said, in, you know, grade at the minimum, I would say about five up. And so these are lovely. Um, so it comes, it's about this big. I don't think it would be important to do them in any particular order. I would find a topic that your child is most interested in and roll with it. I think that is a nice flexibility um, with the program. And so there's the textbook. And then my first tip that I strongly recommend is to purchase the companion MP3 CD that you can get with it. And this is why. Um, my daughter, like I said, did this for her sixth grade year. We are really, as a family, into birds. We've read lots about them. So, you know, diving deeper into that topic was of interest to her. And she is an excellent reader. She reads voraciously. She just reads really, really well. But I wanted her to um, get as much as she possibly could out of the book. And so what I did is I bought the MP3 CD and uh, you can listen either on, it won't work in a CD player because it's MP3s, but I put it, um, copied it, she has an iPod, so you could do it that way or just put it into a computer, your computer will play that. And then as she worked her way through the textbook, she would listen as well as read along so you know that it would be playing and she would be listening and reading and she commented many times she said mom i got so much more out of this book she said i could read it of course but i got so much more out of the book because i was able to hear the pronunciation of scientific terms that i otherwise wouldn't have known how to say and I think that's key you know she reads well and so it wasn't that she was behind or anything like that but especially if you had a child who wasn't a strong reader I think having the companion audio um, for them to listen and read along is really powerful and it is the audio um, mp3s are done by the author Jeannie Fulbright and they're very well done it was a very pleasant she reads that you know she's enthusiastic so I think that's great and it helps get those terms and um, words that they may not know they get to hear them correctly and it just is it means so much more to them so tip number one get the textbook as well as the companion audio CD 
The other thing that you can get with the Young Explorer series is their science uh, notebooking journals. And so you can get them, uh, there's just the regular one, and then there's also a junior version. Uh, they're more or less exactly the same thing. The junior version, instead of just having lines like this in this um, edition, it has the lines, you know, like it's like two lines and then the dotted middle line. But I personally think it, if your child needs the dotted middle line, it's probably they're too young to use this series anyway. So go with the standard version. And I really like the notebooking journal, but I have seen time and time again with families I visit, the first mistake that happens with this series is starting too young. And then the second thing that I that people go wrong with is that they get the notebooking journal and they try to do the whole thing and it is way too much it's too much for your kids and i mean to be, i'm an adult and it would be way too much for me as well and they even say in here just pick and choose so it was never intended to do every page and every activity so keeping that in mind um I do like it. I still think it's worth the money. But what we did um, is instead of having, we just picked and choose. We did one to two things per chapter. So, you know, on, if there was a chapter on feathers and flying in the bird section, then we would pick just one of the notebook activities. And instead of, they have these little, um, so these are what the pages look like. And I think if your child enjoyed drawing, it would be you know fun if they wanted to add an illustration. We are not a family of artists, so we just left that blank and that was okay. So lots of times we would use these pages and we would use them to summarize a chapter. And so we use IEW for our writing curriculum and it tied in really nicely the, what we learned in our IEW with reading something for information and then summarizing some key things. And I was pretty relaxed with this. Like I would give her, you know, one, maybe two pages depending on the chapter and what we have going on in our world and um, then she would just pick some key things that she thought was interesting that she hadn't known before from the chapter and that's sort of how I helped her narrow it down in that way I said well what's something you didn't know before you read the chapter she's like oh well I didn't know this and then I would have her just kind of put it into her own words and she did it very independently and it was great and that also counted as our writing for that day she, if she wrote in her science then we didn't do another writing project you know that was it and so that's how I like to be flexible and like I said we certainly didn't do every single page for every chapter. We just picked, you know, some to do. And I think what helped both of us, we're both very strong A personalities, is that it bugged us. We started off doing it in here and it bugged us to have a book full of empty pages. That just didn't work for us. So what I started doing um, was either you could just rip out the page or you could copy it if ripping it was too hard on your soul. So I would just copy the page and then instead of having a book full of things that we hadn't completed and just completed a few in her all of my kids have a binder for any you know loose papers um, that I put as much as our much of their stuff in as we can so in her binder we had a science section and she would put in the tap or the pages that she'd done from that chapter and she did some really neat projects and then when we'd go to show somebody uh like my mom or our facilitator anything like that instead of being like oh well i didn't do most of it she's like hey look at all the pages i did and we both felt really good about that um so some examples are like i said you know this would be just some you know kind of key things that she used to summarize or some things that she chose to summarize so we used you know a page like that um one time she's like i don't know i don't really want to summarize there's nothing she, you know she just wasn't feeling it so they also have um these questions so she did questions and then the answer to these are actually in the back of the textbook so these are nice um you could just do these orally as well but since I wanted her to write something um, so then she just answered the questions and did that for one of the chapters and that was 
Well, it was good actually, because she's like, oh, that was actually more work than just coming up with a few things I wanted to say myself. So she only did that once, but that was perfectly nice to have. Um, she did a project on, she really liked the chapter on birds' nests. And so I helped her um, get pictures of different types of birds' nests. And she wrote just, you know, a few things. She, I don't know, there was about four pages like this that she did. And so that was a really neat project. Um, another one, they have these little booklets that you can make. And so this was on um, eggs and hatching. So it was a little egg booklet and she, you know, filled out all the information on there and did the little diagram and so that was another fun project but like I said we only picked one or two things to do from each chapter of this and we felt good about that we had something to show but it wasn't overwhelming and we didn't come to hate the program which can happen when you try to do every single thing some other things that they have in the notebooking journals is they have um, some pages for copy work so you could do it um, you know it's a verse that relates to what they're learning about so that's kind of nice you could print it or um, sometimes she did one of those in cursive uh, as part of her cursive practice um, and then at the end of every chapter they have some type of a project and then there's kind of pages you can fill out in the notebook to explain um, what you did with that and I'm gonna be honest we didn't do a single one of those um, they were lovely it was nothing against them we're just busy and I only have so much time that I wanted her to devote to science and so we just didn't do them and I felt no guilt but it's nice that they're there if you want them so in summary I think it's a fantastic program I would highly recommend them for grades you know about six through eight and um, we really like them. We, like I said, we did the flying creatures uh, and, and this is more than enough for a whole year. So we did that and we didn't even do, we did all the stuff on birds and bats, but we didn't do all the stuff on insects. Uh, and then for her seventh grade year, she wanted the one on animals. And so we're going to work through that in the same way that we did the flying creatures. And then for myself, I would like her in my mind, maybe in her eighth grade year, to do the one on human anatomy. I think that would be a really neat one. But yes, I think it's a great program. Just remember to use it so it is interesting and joyful and not to kill it by trying to do too much and having your children slug through every single page. Just read it talk about it. The questions in the back are a great way to engage your child if you're not going to read it. And so you can talk a little bit about it, have them tell you what they learned. And it was so well done that honestly, most times um, when she would read it, and we do, you know, science maybe two days a week on average, um, she would read it and then she'd run up, mom, did you know, blah, blah, blah. And to me, that shows that she was learning and engaged and that's what I like to see when we're doing something. So I'll give the program two thumbs up if you do it in the right way. All right, bye-bye.